Before we talk about PET-8 specifically, let's talk about what a Python Enhancement Proposal, or PEP, is. A PEP is a document that describes a new feature or change that will potentially improve Python. It contains the technical details and the reasons why the new feature or change is needed. If the PEP is accepted, it functions as a guide for the core Python developers to implement the changes in the following Python releases. In other words, a PEP is a fairly important document. Who can propose these important changes? You can, so can I. That's right. PEPs act as an input from the community to determine the future of Python. PEPs requires a lot of thought and discussion within the community to be able to reach a consensus and have it accepted. It is the office's responsibility to develop the PEP and gather support from the community to get it approved. One of the most famous PEPs is PEP8. We talk a lot about it in the community. Not only has it been accepted for a long time, its footprint is seen in many other PEPs. If you note at all the references a PEP makes, you will surely find that many of them trace all the way back to PEP8, directly or indirectly. So what is PEP8? PEP8 is a style guide for Python, not a new feature in the Python interpreter. It's a guide or rules of thumbs on how to style your Python code. The Python syntax is very flexible and can be formatted quite freely. Yet, it will be interpreted the same way by the Python interpreter and work just fine. You can think of PEP8 as a set of rules the community agreed upon to dictate how Python code should look like. You may wonder why it is needed. Actually, straight to formative do have benefits in many ways. First, it improves the readability of the code. If we keep a straight and consistent format, the code is more neat and is much easier to read. It is just our human nature to like looking at things that is symmetric and tidy. Consistency can also minimize the unnecessary distraction when reading the code. When a code is easier to read, it is easier to avoid making mistake. If there's any, it is easier to spot. When the unnecessary distractions, which I mean inconsistency in formatting, is removed, we can focus on what the code is actually about. Also, anything that is out of the ordinary, which is a hint of a potential bug, can be picked up easily. Another benefit is, in open source, there are usually multiple contributors and they will have to all agree on a coherent format anyway. Otherwise, the code is looking messy again due to inconsistency, which we are trying to avoid due to reasons above. Instead of finding a set of rules for each single project, a universal formatting rule can benefit the Python community as a whole. There are a lot of rules that is mentioned in PEP8. Here are some that is well known in the community. First, the most famous four spaces must have rules for the code that needs indentation. It is leading by the four spaces, but not anything else. It is also this reason many of us set our code editor to automatically convert caps to four spaces or do the correct four space indentation for us. Then we have a maximum nine main rule. It is wise to avoid super long line to make it easier to read. There are many ways to restructure code to make the line name fall under the maximum and this is considered the best practice. Mixed is to use blank lines properly, using through blank lines to separate definition of top level classes and within each class. Using one blank line to separate definition of each method. This is a bit like using titles and subtitles to separate paragraphs in articles. Is a pep page. There are also details about naming conventions, when to use capital cases, when to use underscoring names, what names we should avoid using, etc. With these naming conventions, it is easy to see what variable is about. Is it a class object? Or is it a method within the class object? Is it supposed to be internal use only? Or to make things more obvious in the code? Pepe also mentioned the use of documentation strings, most commonly called doc strings. This is a text that is put in the code that serves as a documentation for a module, a class, or a function, etc. It is a good idea to kick the documentation within the code as when we update the code, it is less likely that we forgot to update the strength. There is so much more that is written in details in Pep8, 
like when to use white spaces, when to use trailing commas, etc. I want to try making the code look as coherent and easy to understand as possible. If you would like to check out Pepe yourself, you can find it at the Python official website. Link is as shown. Now we know what Pet8 is about. We'll have to follow it from now on. It sounds really difficult. How can we do that? We are going to find out in the rest of this chapter. Last video, we talked about the importance of following the Pep8. However, it seems very difficult to follow it directly all the time. Don't worry, as developers have tools to help us do it. One of them is Black. Black is a code formatter, meaning that it will rewrite your code without changing how it works to fulfill certain style or format. While using Black, your code will reformat to the Black code style. You may customize the resulting format a little bit, but the option to change the format is limited. You can read more about what is Black code style of their documentation if interested. However, the most important point that we are using it here is that the code style is pep compliant, meaning after formatting your code, it will be pep compliant automatically. Black is a project that is hosted on a Python package index, or PyPI, meaning that you can pip install it easily. Since Black has been launched, it has become more and more popular, and now almost everyone is using it. Here is a few reasons why it is loved and it's good to use Black. First of all, the ease of auto-formatting the code. Black is super easy to use, and it makes the pressure to be aware of the formatting of your code away. While coding, you can focus on the code logic and code syntax and not worrying about the code format as you know they will be all fixed with a single command like Black. Second, as Black has a very tight formatting style, even tighter than Pet8, the project that has notable contributors and authors would have the code that looks very clean and coherent. You can even check if the code contribution for fear of the Black code style in your CI pipeline. Thus, if you render code under Black, and Black gives you an error while formatting, chances are you have some typo or syntax mistake somewhere. You can already start debugging before running any tests. Using Black is super simple, and there are multiple ways of using it. First and most straightforward is to ask Black to format your code manually via the Black command on the command line. You can choose to format a single file or everything under a directory. Or you can add math to your pre-commit code, so every time you try to commit your code, it will run Black automatically for you. This is a proper way of using Black, and we'll explore it later in this chapter. Last, if you have a project and would like to enforce the Black code style, you can add a check in the CI to make sure the code contribution fulfills the style format. You can check the documentation of the project to see the details of using Black. We will also demonstrate some basic usage of Black in a mixed video. Fear then. Now that we have learned what Black is, let's put it into practice. First of all, we want to make sure we have Black installed by using this command. Now, let's use Black to format test.py. Let us remind ourselves what is the file by opening it in bin. Okay. To form as test.py, we only need a single black command. Let's first use this special command to check if tests.py fulfills the black code style. As you can see, we get a prompt saying that tests.py will be reformatted. So let's check what ifit codes we have. The check command exists with code 1, which means that it does not fulfill the black code style. So let's do it now. Now, we get the all done prompt. Test.py has been reformatted. Let's check the reformatted file using bin. Can you spot the difference? It will be more obvious if you use git as I'm here. All you need to do is to use the dip diff command. As you can see, it feels simple nine a edit to make it compliant with per eight and the blackers in parameterize have been nicely reformatted. One last thing, we can now check if the new tests.py fulfilled the black hole style by using the check command again. We get all done again. So what exit code do we have now? The check command exits with code zero. This check command is useful when you want to check if the code fulfills the black hole style in your CI. 
we will come back to it when we set up our GitHub Action Rockfall in the future. So, we're all done with that for now. In the next video, we'll learn more about linting our code.